I expect big things from this man. I'm talking about Sean Brady, who had the tough fight against Bilal Muhammad, but kind enough to join us. Hey, Sean, how are you? Thanks for doing this. What's up, brother? Yeah, man, of course. I'm, I'm good. I'm home. Thank God. Uh, it, was a, <laughs> it was a long trip home, but uh, I'm back in Philly. Been here for about a week, just getting back into the groove of things. I trained this morning, so I'm good, man. I'm honestly the best I've ever been, which is pretty crazy to say, but uh, I'm great. So, so for someone listening to that, why are you the best that you've ever been? Because they would think maybe that, you know, you would be somewhere lamenting the fact, sad about the fact that you lost. Why are you the best you've ever been? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. After the fight, I definitely, I had, listen, listen, I cried, you know, I had my moments. Um, I had my moments on the plane coming home. Even when I got home, the first day was kind of not, not the easiest, but I had this sense, literally the second that fight was over. I had like this sense of relief. Like I was carrying around like this weight on my shoulders of like being undefeated. And it almost felt like my entire life was built around me being undefeated. And that if I lost that, my life would be over. And that's kind of how it felt. Even the week, like in Abu Dhabi, I told my wife, I was having dreams that I lost the fight. And it was just my dream was me being the way I am right now and life just being like normal. Like in my mind, I thought life was going to end if I lost the fight. So I wasn't even fighting to win. I was just fighting not to lose my record, if that makes sense. And as soon as I lost, I'm like, man, that's the worst thing that could have happened to me. And it's done. Like it's over with. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So my mind has just opened up so much. And um, I just feel this sense of relief that I can just be like a new person like I can, I can be a new fighter and um yeah it's just a, a crazy crazy experience and a crazy weight off my shoulders wow uh, i can understand that we've heard that from undefeated fighters or even champions who lose the belt but then seem to be relieved afterwards so uh we've heard this sort of thing before are you surprised by that feeling like did you think that that was going to be a thing if you ever did have to deal with a loss yeah and i've always asked myself like how are you going to I'm always asking myself, how are you going to react if uh, you lose, you know, because it's a possibility. And I know, like, I mentally beat myself. Like, I went back and I watched the fight and I looked good the first round. And I, but in my mind, I was like, I, I'm my hardest critic and um, it cost me the fight. But um, I, if I could go back and win the fight, if I had the choice, I wouldn't have. Because all the lessons I've learned about myself and all these little things I need to change and I'm going to change going forward would never have happened. I would have continued to do the same things I was doing and eventually it would have caught up to me. So I'm so happy that this loss happened to me now. Because like you said, guys will lose one fight and then they go on these crazy tears. GSP lost, yep. went on a crazy tear. Islam lost once. Everyone's going to lose eventually. And um, I'm, I'm really surprised with how good I'm handling it. And I see people and they come up to me and they like are saying sorry, and like they're like hitting up me and my wife, and they feel bad. I'm like, listen, like I'm good, like I'm back in the gym, like I'm happy, you know, like I'm I'm not devastated. Like, yeah, it sucks, but you can't go swimming without getting wet. Like, eventually, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen to all of us. But I'm not even 30 years old. I'm so young in my career. I literally feel like this is just my career starting now. Like now, I can just be a completely different fighter, a completely different person. And now I have to worry about losing because I always wondered, I'm like, damn, like it's going to be over if I lose and life just rolls on. Like it's, it, the, it's the same. My life is completely normal. The people who love me, love me. My team loves me. I'm still ranked in the top 10 in the UFC. I'm going to go and train and fight again soon. And I get to go and do it again. And that's the best thing. And um, yeah, I, I started working with a new uh, mental coach already. His name's Brian Kane. He worked with GSP after his first fight. So I'm just doing all these new things. I'm going to go train, get with some different bodies, not leave my team, but just go travel a little bit, train. I got to get outside my comfort zone. And I would have never done that mm -hmm. if I would have won this fight. So um, I'm just opening up a whole bunch of new doors. So you, you wrote that in a post after the fight that you were going to get out of your comfort zone. And I was just about to ask you what you meant by that. So does that mean you know, because maybe because when you're undefeated, you're like, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But now that that's gone, you can go out and train with other people. Yeah. And not even I've always wanted to go to um, Florida and train with those guys down there. Like I have connections with guys and 
I just always wanted to train and I just never did because I just lived inside of my comfort zone and like just always just doing my same routine and just being comfortable with that and training with the same guys. Don't get me wrong. I'm not leaving my team. Like that's not what I'm saying, but I want to go train and learn some new things from different people and train with different bodies and just get different experiences, you know? And I feel like I've always held myself back from that. Like I'm going to go down to Texas and train with Gordon Ryan and those jujitsu guys and just, just go do different things. I always just get caught, so caught up in what I was doing and just trying to be the best at everything and just being comfortable where I was at instead of like going and maybe getting beat up by some different guys, you know? So now I'm going to open up those doors and, and do that. Go be, I got to go be the nail somewhere. I can't always just be the hammer in my, where I'm at. In Florida, do you mean the, uh, the kill cliff guys, formerly Sanford? Yeah. So Eddie Alvarez obviously yep. has a good connection with them and me, I fought one of their guys a while ago and afterwards me and Henry Hooft have always kind of chatted and just, I know like Brendan Allen and those guys down there and, um, Aaron Jeffrey, who I fought, he's down there. So there's so many good guys down there. I would love to get down there if they would have me and train and just mix it up with those guys. And I know Eddie goes back and forth between here and Florida. So he called me right after the fight. He's like, dude, we can book a flight down there whenever you want. So nice. I have so many options, you know, and I just got to, um, just, I can only do this for so long. I gotta, I gotta go and open up those doors now. And by the way, look no further than the man who beat you a couple of weeks ago, Bilal Muhammad, who I think has looked great as of late. Someone who yeah. stumbled early on, but now on quite a roll and very close to uh, that yep. title picture. Yep. Um, I'm wondering in retrospect, did you underestimate him? No, I didn't underestimate him at all. I trained hard for that fight. And that's another thing that is very, I'm very fortunate that happened. If I would have won that fight, I would have either been fighting for a number one contender, or even possibly for the belt, like crazier things have happened. And I'm not ready for that. And I'm honest with myself. And I know mentally I'm not. Physically, my skills, I know I can beat anybody in the world. But mentally, that entire week, I just beat myself. Even going into the fight, like walking to the arena, like I beat myself. Like, oh, how, yeah. How did you beat oh, yourself? You did I just didn't, I don't, I didn't believe in myself. I started mm-hmm. questioning myself, like, do, do you deserve to be here? Um, and I'm, like I said, I was having those dreams that I lost and it wasn't even in my mind that in the dream, I lost a ball. I just lost a fight and I'm like, fuck, like, and I couldn't get back on track to me winning. Like my thoughts, like every time I thought about it, I could never go back to how good I was and how good my skills were. So I was mentally beat before I even got in there. And even when, um, that flurry of punches were going on, I wasn't out. I could have, I should have grabbed him. I should have threw one punch back. I was watching the clock. I watched the clock go from 20 down to 11. And I thought I was going to make it to the next round, but I just, I froze. I didn't grab him or I didn't try to do something. I, which I should have done, you know? And I just mentally just, I mentally fucking froze. And do you think it was the moment, you know, being overseas, uh, pay-per-view high profile card. Did any of that come into play? Um, Probably a little bit. Like it was definitely, uh, well, it was a very, for the record, everybody in Abu Dhabi was super nice, but walking out, it was hostile as shit. Like it was a very hostile crowd to walk out. I imagine it's probably what it's like walking out in Philly, but um, it was very hostile. And like I said, like even the first round, like I went back and seen what a lot of people, a lot of people thought I won the first round, but in my mind going into the second round, I'm like, fuck, you lost that round. I never give, like, I never gave myself a chance. Got it. And then it just was over before, before I even got to, got, even like when I shot a couple of takedowns, like everyone who knows me as was like, dude, like you don't shoot like that. Like I, like I'm usually, if I'm in on it, I just didn't believe in my skills. And I, and I've always suffered with that. And martial arts is one of the things that the best thing it's ever done for me was build confidence, but I still struggle with that every day of not being a, a confident person when I should be, you know, and, um, I just wasn't confident in my abilities. I wasn't confident in my training that I did and it cost me the fight, but it cost me the fight, but I've gotten so much more out of it than that undefeated record was doing for me. By the way, uh, you also mentioned something in your post after the fight about your wife, were, were people harassing her? What is going on over here? Yeah. Well, you know, like the, the, the messages you get, but um, yeah. yeah, she got some pretty nasty messages. Like, what someone messaged her. Someone messaged her that they said if I won the fight against Bilal, they were gonna they were gonna kill me, what? bury me in the desert. Like they, they were, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty bad. 
What the hell? They're, but, they're, they're reaching yeah. out to your wife to say this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. my was, God. That is horrible. Yeah, was, that is horrible. Was she yeah, there was with you? Bad. Yeah, she was there. My parents were there. And um, she was right there. Like, she was front row with Joey Piper. And she busted through the, like, the security and, like, got to me, like, when I was walking out of the... Uh, walking out of the ring but yeah she was right there with me and like i said yeah she's got some some nasty messages but like dude like these fans are fucking they're scumbags like yeah. they're don't get me wrong there's great fans but then there are these people who have these fake profiles and they write to you afterwards about like i just read some message today i had a and it was just like you're a piece of shit like Jesus. like they just they, they say the most wild things to you and um i don't let it get to me like i I, I try not to read in that shit anymore but like Dude, my wife's a, a, a registered nurse. She's in like all she does is take care of people, and people are threatening her and calling her this and calling her that. So, um, message me, don't message my yeah. wife. Yeah, like, I mean, especially is... if you're a man, like, be a man. You want to say something to me, say it to me, don't say it to my fucking wife because my wife could probably beat you up. But I know for a fact you wouldn't say that shit if we were in real life, and that's the problem. All these people get to hide behind these screens and say these things, and like, even uh, I lost the fight. But my life isn't over. I still live my dream every day. These people hate their lives. And that's why they do what they do. So I almost kind of feel bad for them. But I'd like to slap the shit out of them too at yeah. the same time. But by the way, I mean, it is what it is. This this doesn't have anything to do with you. But I was talking to someone about this uh, regarding all this Jake Paul stuff. Like, I think a lot of the jealousy that he gets is because it's people who hate their lives, who are seeing someone succeed. Yeah. And uh, it just brings out a really ugly side of humanity. And, uh, you know, yeah, unfortunately, 100%. that's- the worst part of social media. So what about you? Like in a perfect world, when would you return? When would you like to fight again? Um, I'm think uh, sooner than later. I'm, I think they just announced that February 18th card. I'm mm. hearing it's going to be a fight night somewhere. I want it. It was nice to be back in front of a crowd. I want to be in front yeah. of a crowd. I want to, I'm hoping it's an East coast card. Like it did, like, even though it was a hostile crowd, it felt good just to be in front of people again. So I definitely want to be not at the apex. I know there's also March 5th, I'm hearing, is at the T-Mobile. I think that's a pay-per-view. So somewhere in that time frame, if I get married, like me and my wife, we're already legally married, but our wedding's May 5th. Uh, so I want to fight before that so I can enjoy my wedding, enjoy a bachelor party or whatever my boys are going to do for me, and uh, then get back, then fight again in the summertime. So I have no injuries. I want to fight in February. Definitely not in, I'm not traveling. I'm not yeah. going to South Korea, and I'm yeah. not going to Australia. So keep me in the States. Um, and no apex to have to play out. Yeah, no, no, none, none of that. No. So, uh, I'm going to sit down with my team, see, see what the UFC says about potential opponents and go from there. Do you have a preference as far as opponent? Not really, not really. Um, if, if I look at the rankings, I mean, me and Luke are literally right next to each other. Yeah. That would be a, that'd be a good fight, but I know he just came off a tough loss and I'm sure he probably wants some time off, but, um, yeah, it's it's whatever these guys think. I'll talk to my team and whatever they think, we'll we'll try and get it. By the way, how far do you think Bilal can go? Do you think he could be champion? Yeah, he's he's good, man. Everybody like I never counted him out, you know. Like, I knew how how good he was and I trained for, but I know that I can beat him and I know I can beat any of these guys. It's just I beat myself. But yeah, I think he's going to do good. Like I think he's a style that the next guys in front of him, he's either He's gonna be fighting for the number one contender and then probably a belt. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go win a couple of fights and then I'll get my rematch with him. And then we'll have a it's, it's gonna be a nice storyline. So uh I finally I never knew I was gonna have one of those where it's like fight uh, one, fight two, fight yeah, three. Yeah. But now it's going it's something like that's gonna happen and it's gonna be a cool story to have. Well, uh, I appreciate the way you're handling this and and the candor and and, and the openness and the honesty. So much respect to you, my friend. Uh, you've got a very, very bright career ahead of you, and uh, I bet you, I will bet you anything that I have that in you know a year or two we're going to be like, remember that fight and what it did for yeah. you, and now you're on a winning streak. Yeah. We've seen this story a million times. You mentioned <laughs> yeah. some of them. Rose is another one. She lost, and then she yeah. becomes. So uh, you'll be just fine. Kudos to you on how Thank you're handling you. it. I wish you the best, and uh, good luck in the next one. And, and uh, Thank you, I don't know if you're a Phillies fan, but uh, good luck to your, to the Phillies. I'm, I was at the I was at the Eagles game yesterday. Uh, Phillies tonight. So geez, Louise, good things are happening. Philadelphia is on fire, man. I am jealous. On fire. Well done. That, Thank you, Sean. Thank All the you, best. Brother. I appreciate it, Ariel. Yeah, Philadelphia sports on fire. How about those Eagles? 
uh, still undefeated, uh, still the second best team in the NFL, if you ask me, uh, but still undefeated. And uh, the Phillies as well, 1-1. Who'd have thunk it? 